Well, I've been going for seven whole days, so abortion laws in America have gotten measurably worse. On the day we're recording this, the South Carolina Supreme Court just upheld an abortion ban it had struck down only a few months earlier, which effectively bans abortion six weeks into pregnancy. So what changed on the court? Well, the only woman on it reached the state's mandatory retirement age and got replaced with a dude. So now all of a sudden, a woman's right to privacy is no longer a controlling concern when it comes to what happens to her body. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the idea of a mandatory retirement age for the Supreme Courts. Hell, given the makeup of our federal one, I'd say set it at 23 and raise it after we've ousted the chuckle fuck theocrats that are burning shit down right now. But the end result of this is terrifying. South Carolina was the one remaining holdout in the South in terms of abortion bans. Now the state with the least restrictive abortion laws in the region is Florida. Florida, which already bans abortion after 15 weeks and is in the process of trying to whittle that number down. But as we all know, it was never just about abortion. It was about sexual autonomy. Not just for women, for everyone. Which we're reminded of every time the concept of birth control comes up around anti-abortion activists. Those groups, of course, are fighting hard against the newly approved drug, Norgestrel, which is sold under the brand name Opil. It's the first over-the-counter contraceptive pill ever approved by the FDA. So for the first time, women can get the most effective form of birth control available to them without paying a doctor for their permission first. And of course, it's the target of a rampant disinformation campaign by anti-abortion groups, groups that should be all about making contraception as widely available as possible, unless they're full of shit and actually just anti-woman. Anyway, there was a good expose on the tactics they're using in Miss Magazine online, which Alan sent to us at scathingnews at gmail.com, and which I'll share in the show notes if you're interested. And for our international listeners who are thinking, man, I'm glad I don't live there, I should remind you that they're always looking to branch out internationally. Like take, for instance, a story we got from astute listener Kevin about Australian Catholic hospitals refusing to provide birth control and abortion. And as fucked up as that is, we're kind of numb to it in America. But we don't have universal health care. Our hospitals aren't publicly funded the way that theirs are. And they're not as cowed to the legal impunity churches demand for themselves as a condition of helping people not die. So revelations about the restrictive policies are causing quite a stir. And I need to remind everyone on the practical consequences of this shit. Like a lot of people want a tubal ligation if they're getting a C-section since, you know, they're already opened up and it would be the safest possible time to do it. Catholic hospitals won't do that. Worse still, they can't even see sexual assault victims since they pre-refuse to administer the morning after pill. So those patients just have to be diverted to the second closest hospital. Now, the good news is that Australia's secular activists are way more organized and, at least historically, way more effective than ours. And there's a concerted effort to change this shit. The bad news is that we know Catholic institutions would literally stop providing medical care before they'd make baby Jesus cry. So at least right now, the public funding looks unlikely to change. And now that you're good and depressed, I guess I can hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.